Everyone, Cody from Mac Telecom Networks. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the new Ubiquiti UISP switch. They're coming out with this new UISP line of gear, and I'm really excited to try it out. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button. Make sure to hit the bell icon. If you'd like to hire me for network consulting, visit www.mactelecomnetworks.com. You can find us on Instagram at Mac Telecom Networks, and we have a Discord server, which I'll put a link in the description below. The USIP switch and USIP router just launched a few days ago, and they're still both available in the USA store. I currently only have the UISP switch, so that's what we'll be focusing on today. Here's a topology that we'll be building on when I get more gear. So we have site A, which has the UISP router, and then we have the UISP switch. I also have these two Gigabean Plus 60s, which I've had for a few months. I was planning on doing a video, but never did. So this is a great time. On site B, we'll have another Gigabean Plus 60 and an Enterprise 8 PoE. And then we'll connect a U6 Pro off of that. There is also one other UISP device that's still in EA. And I hope that it launches soon because it would blend really well with this topology. So now let's take a closer look at the UISP switch. And we need to get it adopted into our USIP controller. And here's the new UISP switch. And I got to say that the aesthetics of this is really pleasing. I really like the white outer case. On the front of the switch, we see this S, and that's because the switch and the router both look identical. So this way we could tell which one is which. We also have the status light indicator, and then we have our eight ports, and these are all passive PoE with 27 volts. I also really like how they labeled the ports with the blue labeling, and then we have our one SFP port. This is a one gigabit, and then we have a reset button. On the back, we have where we would ground it, and then we have our 27 volt power input. We also get this 120 watt power supply and we have one of our power inputs. And then on this side, we have a power transport and this transport actually locks. I'm not too sure why they didn't add locking on both sides as well as on the switch. But we have this other power cable, we'll plug it in and then we could lock this down. And now this power cable won't ever come out. But on this side, if we plug it in, there's no lock, so this could easily plug out. Also comes with our standard mounting template and then our mounting bracket and some screws and anchors. A few more things about the switch. It's fanless with thermal cooling for silent operations. It has layer two features. It doesn't support layer three and it's made out of a polycarbonate enclosure. And that's the physical look of the UISP switch. And like I said, I really like the design that they went with. The UISP switch is $139 USD MSRP. And it's currently available right now in the American store as of the time of this video. So this switch is managed by the UISP application. It needs to be version 1.4 beta.11 or later. The first thing we need to have is a UISP controller. So we could go over to uisp.ui.com and we could see get UISP for free. Now there's a couple different choices. We have UISP cloud. So now we could host UISP for you for free. The fastest, most convenient way to use USIP. There is a limitation to this though. You need to have a minimum of 10 UISP devices and you have 30 days to put that on the controller. If you don't put that on the controller, I believe they shut it off. Or we could host USIP locally. So host USIP yourself locally without limitations the way to go if you need control. And we could spin this up in a virtual machine if we wanted. Right now for this video series, I'm just gonna use their USIP cloud for the 30 days. To start, we need to sign in with their single sign-on. If you don't have an SSO, you need to create an account. And now we have some setup of the USIP controller. So we need to specify a URL. I'm gonna call this YouTube test. And then we're gonna to agree to the terms below. So I understand that a free USIP cloud controller requires at least 10 active Ubiquiti devices in a total after the 30th day of setup. And then we'll agree to the terms as well and press next. And now it's creating our USIP cloud controller. The controller is now created and it says, add your first device to UISP. So what we need to do, we need to download the UISP app on our Android or our iPhone. Now I'm logged in to UISP on my iPhone application. We could see that the network is empty. We could also check the network, which is also empty or we could add a device. So I'm gonna hit the plus icon. Here it's gonna to try to discover the device. We won't be able to find it, but you could either do it by the QR code, which I did try and it didn't work, or we could add it by the IP address by pressing the plus button. Currently, I just have this UISP switch connected to another UniFi switch as I don't have the UISP router. 
But once it comes in, we will put it all together. So the switch IP address is 192.168.155.61. And that's just the subnet that I created on my UDM Pro. The default username is UBNT and the default password is also UBNT and we'll press login. Okay, so now it says UISP switch setup. We'll give it a name of Mac Telecom. UISP switch. And then we'll press next. We can see it gives us all the port listing here. So port one to nine, which nine would be your SFP port. And we could also click on the ports. Here we could give the ports a port name. We could have it enabled and we could have PoE on or off. We could set the duplex and we could create lag groups. So if we wanted to turn the PoE on, we could either have it at 27 volts or 27 volts dash four pair. We'll just leave it off for now and we'll press next. So now it's finishing our setup of the UISP switch. And once this is done, we'll look at it on the computer. All right, now we're into the UISP controller through the web interface. We could see we have my Mac Telecom UISP switch. We could see the type, the model, the firmware status, which is up to date and the uptime. We'd also see the MAC address, the IP address, the CPU and RAM, and what it's assigned to. We could also see uplink, downlink, uplink utilization. Now clicking on the switch, we could see a bit more information. We could see what's plugged into all nine of the ports, if it's running at gigabit speed or 100 by 10, or disabled or disconnected, which most of the ports are disconnected. It will also show us if there's power running through the port. We have all our general information here, as well as latency and service uptime. We'd take a look at our uplink, which we don't have any UISP uplinks or downlinks right now. And we could see subscribers if we had them. And now under ports, we could do a little more than what we could with the phone app. So I could click on port two, we could give it a name, we could turn on PoE, or we could change the speed and the duplex. We could also look under configuration. And here we could isolate the port, we could turn on DHCP snooping, flow control, and then we could do speed limit. So if you're using this as a WISP, you could speed limit the port. So we could set it to whatever maximum download speed we'd like. We could also turn on or off spanning tree protocol and then the edge port were set to auto, but we could have the edge port set to enable or disable. We could disable this port completely and we could also run a cable test on it. Another cool feature, we could reset port link and PoE power right from this port interface. Taking a look under our settings, we could see services. We have the NTP client where we could set our NTP or network time protocol to whichever we'd like. We'll use the Ubiquity time protocol and we could turn on the SSH server so that we could SSH into the switch, which I'll do right now. We have the web GUI turned on. We have the HTTP port, which is 80 and then 443, and we could switch this if we'd like. We have Ubiquity Discovery on, and then we have Scan Neighbors. So this will scan different neighboring devices. Under Manage, we have the device name, and then we have the site, which it's currently on the Mac Telecom site. But if we had multiple different sites, we could push it to that. We have a locate device. If we don't know what device it is, we could locate this, and it will blink a light on the switch. We could restart the switch, and we could change the firmware. Under Backups, we could upload a backup to the switch, or we could backup now. And then we have maintenance mode, so we could turn maintenance mode on. Below we have our credentials, so this would be to log into our SSH session. We have download device info, advance, and then forget device. Now if we wanted to get to the command line, we can because we enabled SSH. I'll open up a PuTTY session, 192.168.155.61, that's the switch IP. The username I have right now is UBNT, and then it set a password for me. Now we could do a ton of different switch commands. So if we press the question mark, we could see all that we could do from this interface. We could see here, we could do clear clock, configure, copy, debug. We could disable end or exit. So let's go into configure mode. So we could type in C-O-N-F and then we could just press tab to autofill and press enter. This brings us into the switch config mode and we could do a lot more here. So if we press question mark again, you would see all of the other commands that we could do. We could do AAA, we could do analytics, authentication, we could do radius, we could do spanning tree, SSH key, storm control, so on and so forth. So this switch CLI is pretty powerful. I plugged in one of the Gigabeam plus 60s into port two, just so you guys could see that it's working and we could see that it's giving it PoE. In the next video, I should have the UISP router. So we'll do a full setup and get this topology working. It's all just going to be done in my office as I don't have any jobs right now for any point to point or point to multi point. I'm thinking about buying a bunch of different edge switches and edge routers to be able to mimic a wireless ISP 
and set up some OSPF for redundancy. If you would like to see that, please leave it in the comments below. If you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up button. If you're new here, please subscribe and hit the bell icon. All right, thanks.